Right now, if you want film emulation in DaVinci Resolve, you've got tons of options. There are big all-in-one plugins, simple LUTs, and everything in between. Now there's a new option on the market from the folks at Pixel Tools called Film Emulsion. They reached out and asked if I'd like to take a look at it and tell you what I think. Now I want to say up front, this isn't a sponsored video, they are not paying me to make this, and they do not get to see this video before I post it. They did send me a copy for free, but I promise I'll be sharing all of my thoughts, the good and the bad. Here's the thing about Film Emulsion. It's not trying to compete with the huge expensive plugins like Filmbox or Dehancer or Colin Kelly's new plugin Genesis. Jason over at Pixel Tools was very clear about this when he sent it my way. He says they want to give you a real film look that's more affordable and easier to access. And the way they do this is pretty unique as well. Instead of cramming everything into one plugin, they built it as a modular toolkit. So think of it like Lego blocks for your color grade. You get DCTL files, LUTs based on real film stocks and power grades and all of these pieces will work together inside your normal DaVinci Resolve workflow. Now, why does this matter? Most plugins hide everything behind an interface. You turn some knobs, but you don't really see what's happening under the hood. The idea here is that everything lives right in the node graph, where you can see it and control it. It's not for people who want like a one-click magic button. You do need to be comfortable working with node trees. But if you want to add your own adjustments in between the steps that they lay out so you can customize it, you can do that. So with all that said, in this video, I'm going to walk you through what you get with your download, how to install it, and then I'll show you how it works and I'll give you all of my thoughts along the way. Right off the bat, I need to warn you, if you're using the free version of DaVinci Resolve, this is not the product for you. Film Emulsion is built using DCTL files or DaVinci Resolve color transform language files, and you need the paid studio version of Resolve to use those. So if you've got money to spend, you should go buy Resolve Studio first. It's totally worth it, and it comes with a built-in Film Look Creator plugin, and that'd be a great place to start. Now, one more bit of bad news, as far as I can see, there's no free trial or watermark demo to use. I can't say I blame them since a big part of this is built around using LUTs. And I'm pretty sure you can't protect a LUT from being used without permission once someone's got it in their hands. So how does all this work? If you're actually going to shoot a movie and then show it on a projector, there's two different parts of the process that you've got to consider. So you capture your image on one type of film stock, that's your negative. Then after you edit it together, you print a copy of your finished images to a print stock. So Film Emulsion, much like those other plugins I mentioned, is built to do the exact same thing. You've got negative stocks you use at the start of the process, and then print stocks you use at the end. Now, there's two different versions of Film Emulsion, Basic and Pro. As I'm filming this, the website's already a little bit out of date because an update was released a few days after launch. And that's also why this video is coming out a little bit later than I had originally planned. So when it first released, it came out with two DCTL files, Neg and Print. And as you can probably guess, one contained the negative film stocks and the other the print stocks. Then about a week later, they changed it in the pro version, so there's now four DCTL files. Three for the negative stocks, split into Kodak, Fuji, and Mixed, and a fourth for the print stocks. Apparently, the original negative DCTL was crashing for some users in the pro version. Now, that's an unfortunate bug for them right out the gate, but it is impressive how quickly they turned around to fix for it. The pro version comes with 16 negative stocks and three print stocks. The negative stocks are a mix of motion picture film stocks, including some rare or discontinued ones, and a couple of less standard stocks, which I've pointed out here on the screen. The basic version is much more limited. We've got four negative stocks and one print. Now with both versions, you also get power grades, which are pre-built node trees that have got the DCTLs and some other tools all set up and ready to use, and I'll show you those in a bit. Now, as well as way more film stocks, the pro version will also be adding more stocks in the future as a free update. And they're also planning to eventually add their own grain and halation tools, and that will also be a free update. Now you're not going to get any of that with the basic version, but you will get updates for bug fixes and that kind of thing. In both cases, the price is a one-time purchase, so there are no subscriptions to worry about. So here's the zip file I downloaded for the pro version. If I unzip this, there are a few folders inside. The first one we need to look at is this one, DCTL and LUT install files within. In here, you've got two options, and the one you choose depends on your setup. If you've got a DaVinci Resolve Mini or Advanced panel, so one of the ones with screens on top, you need to pick the No Icon version. As you'll see here in a second, the version called Mac OS, Windows, and Linux is going to install versions of the DCTL files that have got little emoji icons in the UI. Now, those don't work if you're using a panel with a screen because it doesn't know how to read emojis and special characters, so it can cause glitches or crashes. Just something to keep in mind. Since I only have the micro panel attached to this machine, I'm going to install the version with icons because why not? Now, if you've never installed a DCTL file before, they actually live in the LUT folder on your machine. Now, the easiest way to find that is to go to Project Settings, Color Management, and near the bottom, you'll see an Open LUT Folder button. Give that a click, and then once you have, go back to Resolve, and make sure 3D Lookup Table Interpolation is set to Tetrahedral, 
because that's way more accurate and should always be your default. And then quit resolve, because to get these files to show up, you're going to need to restart it. Now within the lot folder, I'm going to create a new one called pixel tools just to keep things organized. Then I'm going to take the contents of this folder and copy it in. Now it's very important you copy everything and you don't change any names or move things around because you will break something. Now we can open Resolve back up and open up a project. Before we start using this tool, the last thing I want to do is import the power grades that they supplied. On the color page, open up the gallery and add a new power grade album by right clicking here. I'll call it Film Emulsion. Now since they're in a power grade album instead of a still album, they'll be available for any project in this library. Now I'm going to right click, hit import, and navigate to the additional files folder and then power grade DRX files. I'll pick the icon version folder since that's what I installed and then I'm going to select all six of these DRX files and import them. One last thing before I demo this, if you have the pro version there's another folder you might have noticed called technical unbalanced LUTs. Now basically when they developed these films some of them were old and expired and they had a pretty heavy tint on them and they neutralized that for the LUTs that the DCTLs are going to use but they've also supplied the original versions if you want to play with them. Okay, let's actually use this thing. Now, this works with color management using CSTs or automatic resolve color management, but in either case, you will need to work in DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate as you're working color space. ACES and other color management support is supposedly coming in a future free update. If you are doing color management with CSTs, but you want to use a third party tool like OpenDRT or JP2499 for the output, it works with that as well. And if you've got no idea what anything I just said means, I'm going to link to a video I made as an introduction to color management. And there are other YouTubers like Darren Mostyn, Casey Ferris, and Colin Kelly that have also got good videos on the subject that you can search for. I'll show you how this works when you color manage using nodes. In the color management settings for the project, I'll set it to DaVinci YRGB, DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate for the timeline. I've got my trusty RE test shot here on the timeline. Now I'm going to go to my power grades, and since I'm not using Resolve Color Management, I'll pick one of these three that doesn't say RCM version on the thumbnail. I'll start with the Kodak one. If you've got a clickable middle mouse button, you can just click that and it will apply the grade. Otherwise, right click and select apply grade. One final bit of setup to do. Go to the input node and make sure the input color space and gamma are correct for the footage. So in my case, RE wide gamma 3 and RE log C3. And on the output CST, we'll make sure that's set up correctly as well. The default here is fine. Now we'll work our way through the power grade. First up, we've got the negative DCTL. You'll pick your stock from this drop down here. Because I picked the Kodak power grade, it loaded the Kodak DCTL, which just has the Kodak stocks. But you can switch to one of the others by using this drop down menu here and selecting Fuji or Mixed. If you've got other DCTL files installed, you might have to scroll around a little bit. Of course, if you've not really done anything yet, you can apply one of the other power grades. You'll just have to dial in the input and output CST nodes again. Now these controls above help you dial in the look of the stock. The first slide is kind of like an opacity slider for the node, where you can go from full strength to none. I'm going to set this at around three quarter strength. These other sliders are pretty self-explanatory, but they aren't supposed to be where you do your primary corrections. You do all of that before this using normal grading controls. These are just to dial in the look of the film stock itself. Next we've got halation node. This is using halation that comes in the film look creator effect. But if you've got the pro version, they will be replacing this with their own tool and a free update later. So dial this into taste. Next up is a roll-off node. Film tends to have more compressed highlights than digital footage, so they added a curve here to do just that. But if you press on the key tab here, they've got it dialed down to two-thirds strength. So you can use this slider to turn up or down the intensity of the effect. If you watch my scopes, you can see what that's doing to the image. After that, they've added a subtle bit of sharpening using a combination of mid-tone detail here in the primaries, along with a blur tool. And again, they've turned down the intensity in the key tab. That's working hand in hand with the next node, which is film grain. This is actually a compound node. If I right click on there to take a look inside, you'll see they've added a little bit of film blur using the film damage effect. And then they dialed in two different grain nodes, one for working in HD and another if your timeline is 4K. Now, as with all these tools, tweak it as much as you want. This is also gonna get replaced with their own grain tool in a future update if you've got the pro version. Then we've got a gate weave node that's adding a subtle amount of camera shake to simulate the film going through the camera and sort of wobbling around a little bit. And once again, use it, don't use it, tweak it to your heart's content. Now we've got the print DCTL. You can pick from the print stocks available and tweak the intensity and the look of it a little or a lot to dial in your look. And again, like negative print, these controls are for tweaking the look of the film print itself, not for actual color grading. Then we've got a new edition called Deep Shadows. Apparently when they first launched, some people told them they thought the black levels seemed a little bit lifted on some of the negative stocks, so they've thrown this on the end. 
it makes a slight tweak with the log tool in the primaries panel to bring the shadows down a bit. Now, if I was using this effect, I would actually set it up a bit differently. I like to use an emulation like this in such a way that it's applied to all of the footage uniformly. So I'd set it up using groups. I made a whole video showing how this works, which I'll link to in the description. But very basically, I would group together all the footage from the same camera. So in this case, I would take all of these Ari clips and add them to a new group called Ari. I would grab a still of the changes I made to the power grade, reset all my nodes. Then I would take this power grade and add it at the post clip stage. I'd copy the input node to my clipboard and delete it from here. And then I'd apply it to the pre clip stage. So this way, all of the Ari clips are converted to DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate first. Then I grade each shot individually at the clip level. And then the look is being applied to all of them afterwards post clip. This way, if I tweak my look, it's going to be applied in the same way to all of the shots in the group. I might also want to take the halation node out as well and add that on a clip by clip basis, since that's probably the sort of thing I'd want to tweak shot by shot. I should quickly show you how this works if you're using Resolve Color Management. I'll go back to the project settings and change it to DaVinci YRGB Color Managed. I'll untick Automatic Color Management, and for the color processing mode, I'll use HDR DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. Then I'll set the appropriate output color space. Now when I hit save, it's going to look awful because it's doing color management twice. I'll go to the pre-clip section and remove the input and the post-clip, I'll remove the output and everything will go back to normal. If I wipe all of this out and apply one of the power grades that's got RCM version written on them, you'll see it's the same layout as before. They've just disabled the input and output nodes. Now here are a few more examples using different combinations of film stocks. I've not done much other than a few light tweaks to things like white balance or exposure where needed. I want to see what kind of looks I could get using the default settings for the most part. And I've got to say, I'm really impressed with the results it's giving me. Now, I'm not going to do a full-on comparison to all of the other film emulation options on the market, but I do want to point out a couple of obvious things. If you look at Filmbox, they've got 98 film stocks, tons of controls, but price-wise, you're paying a premium if you want a perpetual license. Genesis has got 55 negative and print stocks and lots of control and some very high prices. The Hunter's got over 60 film stocks, lots of controls, and a range of prices depending on if you're doing a subscription or getting a perpetual license. If you're just comparing the price of the perpetual license, then Film Emulsion looks like a great deal. Now, obviously there aren't anywhere near as many film options available, but these other products have been around a lot longer other than Genesis, which is still pretty new. Now they've got more stocks coming and more custom tools like halation and grain on the way as well, along with other color management options. And honestly, I think there is something to be said for having less options. I did a walkthrough of Dehancer a while back, which I'll link to below. And one of my criticisms was that personally, the amount of choice you get is quite overwhelming. We work at a pretty frantic pace here and we put out a ton of videos every year. And if you give me too many options, I kind of get decision paralysis, which can slow me down. Now, the other big win for Pixel Tools is the fact that everything is so out in the open, spread across multiple nodes, rather than all buried in a plugin. And I can really see the appeal of taking the power grades that they supply and then making my own custom setups that work the way I want to, whether that's a simpler setup or a way more complex one. Also, because it uses DCTL files, when updates are released, you can keep the older ones on your system so past projects aren't going to break if you open up a project later in the future. If I was to criticize it, it honestly feels like a little bit rushed as a release. Now, obviously, I'm not privy to any of the business decisions that go into making something like this, and I love the looks that I'm getting out of it. But I wonder how long we're going to have to wait for the custom tools and upgrades to the color management options. Is it going to take so long that they felt like they couldn't wait any longer to release it? And the fact that they had to make a pretty big change to the pro version, splitting that negative DCTL into three because of crashes almost immediately after launch, makes me wonder if it would have benefited from a little bit more time beta testing before going out into the world. With all that said, I love how transparent Jason and the team are and how eager they've been to get feedback and implement it, like adding in that shadow adjustment pretty much immediately. They've made a really great product here and it's going to fit really nicely into the way I work. Now, if you're interested in picking it up for yourself, you're going to find a link in the description. And if you use the coupon code TOM10, you can get 10% off anything from their website. Now, I really hope you found this walkthrough helpful. And if you did, please hit the like button to help other people find it. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on more Resolve tips and tricks like these. Now, thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.